fastest growing sector in history, corporates strike again. I'm your host Matthew Moody and this week we go back to university. Purpose. Built. Scooby-Doo. Accommodation. Hello and a warm welcome back to Property TV, where we'll be delving once again into the murky depths of the property industry, so do stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed, do subscribe below to the channel, where you'll get the latest hints, tips and strategies, as well as our weekly news of what's going on right now. So in previous episodes, we have discussed everything from the building of new homes to modular homes to what's going on with new regulations. And this week, we're focusing on the student sector. So last year, universitiesuk.ac.uk recorded 2.3 million students pursuing higher education in the UK. Now surprisingly, out of that figure, 1.87 million are in fact UK based but there's only a small minority that come from the EU, and that number is actually 134,800, whilst the majority of foreign students actually come from outside of the EU, accounting for 438,010 people, which is a very accurate number, I have to say. Just making it up as usual. In a survey conducted by the Select Property Group, 75% of students expressed an overall preference for the PBSA versus private HMO accommodation. Now what is the PVSA? I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you, it stands for Purpose Built Student Accommodation. So picture big blocks, huge blocks, lots of rooms in them. Uh, students typically share in communal areas and you've pretty much got PVSA. Private HMO accommodation, however, can be standard terrace houses, separate attached houses, could be in the town centres, here, there and everywhere. Uh, and what we're seeing is overseas students are being somewhat cautious about being crammed into a terraced house and fending for themselves. That's their literal word. Yeah, all right, it's not written on here, is it? I'm gonna write it on my script. So is this the death knell for the private landlord? Well, we'll have to see, won't we? Because PBSA actually goes all the way back to 1962. So it's not as though this is a new thing, but universities obviously began building accommodation back in the day to house that huge wave of students that were starting to go to university. And if we go back uh, to 2015, just a few years ago, that's when the government uncapped the number of students any university could take. Again, meaning another wave of demand from students has grown, particularly in the overseas sector. The problem is that the universities now are getting worried and wanting to damn the flow of new students because when we look at expenditure, 33 billion overall expenditure for universities, only 1.7 billion of that was actually spent on accommodation and conferences. The majority of it, 18 billion, was spent on teaching and research. So how can they solve this ongoing issue? But there's a couple of companies that are taking this on board and are starting to run with it. One of which is the Bristol-based company, the Unite Group, who centered their whole business around PBSA. And they've collaborated with quite a few universities and have gone countrywide. They're focused in 75 properties across 24 university towns and cities. So you can find this information, I'm sure, on their website. But here's a few highlights for you. Oxford Brookes University and King's College London. They're collaborating on a £170 million investor. So there's not really that many private landlords that have got £170 million to hand, so it may be worth possibly not looking at that sector if you want to keep on having students in your private HMO accommodation. Uh, in Oxford alone, they're going to be producing 887 rooms and another 1,000 rooms in London. And I'm sure this is a mistype, but I'm going to say it anyhow. In Ashton University, they're going to do 3,067. Seems a big number, but maybe they are. And another 331 bed site in Edinburgh. Uh, and that one is just a 24 million pound project. So they're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, and they appear to be doing it pretty well because in Edinburgh alone they have over 1,700 beds just in that one town. Uh, so Richard Simpson, the group property director, said, Edinburgh is one of the leading university destinations with increasing student numbers. Combined with our other four Unite sites in the city, 123 Fountain Bridge offers further diversification within our portfolio, providing students with one of the most affordable student accommodation options in the city centre. This is a great addition to our portfolio and that 100% occupancy for the 2017-2018 academic year. It is clearly proving a popular choice for Edinburgh's growing student population. 
affordable student accommodation. Now, it's my understanding that typically the PBSA is more expensive than student private HMO accommodation. So on average, this is about 20 to 40 pounds extra per week. So how is this affordable is a question I have. The second one is what they don't say is in terms of 100% occupancy, the reason why the occupancy is so high is because a lot of these groups such as Unite actually tie the universities in to actually guaranteeing student numbers for their blocks, which means that there will always be 100% accommodation. Let's just do that again. There will always be 100% occupancy, even if there's nobody in the building, because the university is actually guaranteeing it. This means that they are at a massive advantage versus private landlords. Yet again, corporates winning, maybe. However, I think it's fair to say that when we speak to students, and you should go out and speak to them, if you're in the market, you should be talking to students anyhow, once you're beyond your first year, most students in second, third, and fourth years are looking for maybe something slightly different. They may be looking for that kind of experience of living out in their own home, with friends, etc., trying to do things for themselves for the first time. And thus, the private HMO sector has possibly still got some legs in it yet. Run out of things to say now. <laughs> the key thing you need to know is PBSA is not going away. It's been around since the 60s. It's going to continue growing. So anyone out there that is investing in student accommodation, I would advise you to be very careful about the areas you're going into. I would advise you to provide the best quality accommodation that you can so that you can't compete with the big boys. And I would also advise you to have exit strategies in place in terms of if you have to get out of the uh, student sector and go into something else. Thank you very much for joining us once again for Property TV. Do check out our previous episodes and make sure you have subscribed and stay tuned for even more Property TV coming your way. Adios for now.